when in 1263 Domantas, spurred by Trinyota, killed our king Mindogas, the strife, which had to resolve who would succeed him, started. Mindogas' son, Vaishvilkas, who disliked his father and failed to associate with him, and who had taken vows of an orthodox monk, was alive. Totvilas, who was the son of Mindogas' brother Dosprungas, temporarily residing in Polotsk and Vitebsk, believed that his time had come. That was why bloodshed was imminent. At the end of the same year, cousin Trenyota killed Totvilas. That was too much for us, Mindogas' servants. In the next year, secretly supported by Vaishvilkas, we did away with Trenyota. We rejoiced over Vaishvilkas' return, but our joy quickly turned sour. He returned to us, led by the forces of Russian duchies. He was assisted by his sister's husband, the Duke of Helm Schwarn, and the Duke of Volina Vasilka, who was Duke of Novgorod. More than that, it turned out that Vaishvilkas had taken the pledge to return to the monastery three years later. Assisted by the Russian dukes, Vaishvilkas recaptured Black Russia, which he had ruled earlier, Lithuania, and in 1265 did away with the supporters of Trenyota and Domantas' conspiracy in Deltova and Nalsia. The new environment of Russian Helichians, who supported Vaishvilkas, altered the direction of the political orientation of Lithuania. Lithuania as a non-autonomous force could be sucked into the orbit of Russian affairs. We were anxious about Vaishvilkas, an Orthodox Christian, and Christianity in general. He released the Christians who had been arrested by Mindogas and Trenyota, he proposed peace to Livonia, and went out of his way to maintain good relations with it. In the meantime, the onslaught of the orders began. In 1267, Semigallians and Koronians surrendered to Livonians, and in 1265, the order launched its attacks against Prussian rebels. Only the Poles of Poland Minor were fended off after they devastated Jotvingian lands cruelly in 1264. Vaishvilkas and Schwarn undertook a successful march of Lithuanian troops against the Duke of Krakow, Boleslav V the Chest. The year 1267, the year of Vaishvilkas' vows, approached. He did leave us and transferred power to the Helician Schwarn, who failed to keep it for a long time. He died in 1269. His brother Lev is said to have murdered him. In the same year, the Duke of the Neris land, Tridanus, took charge of Lithuanian affairs. Seven years of turmoil were not conducive to the improvement of state affairs in the development of Lithuania. It was on all sides surrounded by enemies. Tridanus started with Helicians and ousted them from Lithuania. The contraposition developed into the 1274-76 war. The Helicians even had to resort to the Tatar troops for help. Lithuania won the war. Southern borders were defended and strengthened, and Tridanus permitted Prussians, Suduvians, and Skalvians, who were fleeing to Lithuania, to settle in Black Russia. Battles with Livonia were quite variable. At the beginning of 1270, Lithuanians broke into Sarum, and in the battle near Karuse, defeated the order. Notwithstanding Lithuanian victories, the order took Semigallian castles and made them surrender in 1272. In February 1279, Master Ernst von Rasburg, aided by the Danes and Western European supporters, entered Lithuania and reached Kernave. On the 5th of March, Lithuanian troops overtook the invaders by the Asherade and defeated them. The master, the Danish vicegerent, 71 knights and many others perished in the battle. This battle is said to have been the greatest after Durbe. Like after the Battle of Durbe, lands which were enslaved by Livonia, this time Semigalia, were liberated again and became Tridanus' subjects. After Tridanus died in 1291, the order suppressed the insurrection and reoccupied a major part of Semigalia. Battles with the German order for us, Lithuanians and all Bolts, were not successful. The Great Prussian insurrection was suppressed. The Teutons started to fight with the Nadruvians and Scalvians without delay. At that time, Tridanus was fighting Helicians and was in no position to help the lands which had recognized Mindogas' authority, and between 1274 and 77, Nadruva and Skalva were defeated. Free Baltic lands were becoming fewer and fewer. No more insurrections in Prussia, Sasna, Barta, Sembia, Galinda, Nadruva, Skalva, Sudova, Jotva, Koronian lands, and Semigalia. When in 1283, Teutonic Knights reached the Namunas River and the Livonian Order was entrenched in northern Lithuania, both orders gathered strength 
to eradicate the state of Lithuania. After the death of our king Tredanis in 1282, the following year there was a new ruling family. Pukuveras, with his brother Butigeidis, got the upper hand. German chronicles called him Rex Butigeide, while Peter of Duisburg titled Pukuveras the king of Lithuania, Pukuveras Rex Latovia. Our chronicles know very little about them. They are said to have been children of Skalmantas, who became prominent under King Mindaugas. Their patrimony was in the same location as that of Mindaugas, between the Namunas and the Neris rivers. Butigedes died in around 1290 and Pukoveras in 1295. It is well known that Pukoveras had four sons, Bitanis, Gediminas, Venus, Theodoras and maybe Margiris as well. The new dynasty received its name from the second Pukoveras's son, Gediminas. It left a numerous and viable branch of progeny, eight sons, and the most famous among them were the Grand Dukes of Lithuania, Algirdas, Ionutis and Kestutis, and among the six daughters of Gediminas there was Maria, who married the Duke of Tver, Dmitry Mihailovich, in 1320, Aldona, also known as Ona, who married Polish King Casimir III the Great, and Augustia, also known as Anastasia, the wife of Semyon, the son of Grand Duke of Moscow, Ivan Kalita.